Welcome back to the American Dream Podcast Season 3. Now it's time to hear what Americans think of their dream. I'm your host, Ekaterina. Привет! I'm in a studio with Virginia Kelly. Welcome! Thank you! So we are co-workers and I like to call you my best friend. However, I just realized that I don't know that much about you. So I will be learning about you as we speak today. Mm -hmm. And I want to let you introduce yourself the way you want. I am uh, from, well, I've lived in Springfield all my adult life. I moved here to go to college. And before that, I lived in Mansfield, Missouri, which is about 45 miles from here. So I have never lived further away than 50 miles from my birthplace. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned before, we worked together mm -hmm. for Summit Media. And uh, how old are you? When were you born? I was born in 1960, so I'm 62. So you are a baby boomer. Barely. <laughs> Describe how does that make you feel? Like, how old. do you feel? <laughs> it makes me feel old. When does the baby boomer start? I mean, because I can't remember. I have I have six older siblings, the oldest of which is 22 years older than I am. So I don't know if she's a baby boomer or if she's just next to dead. I, I, I mean, she's still alive. Um, but I think I'm at the end of the baby boomers. Yes, you are. So baby boomers are 1946 through oh. 1964. Oh, my gosh. She's older than a baby boomer. Anyway, so, yeah, I grew up with a, lots of different ages. Mm-hmm. And my mom was a lot older, so... In your opinion, what was the most important historical period or event you've lived through? You know, I don't... I, I would want to say, I think about Vietnam, but I don't know that much. I was really too young to pay that much attention. And I think about women's rights mm -hmm. and the big struggle that we've gone through, through the 60s and 70s, to to have equal rights mm -hmm. as men. And I'm, I think those are important historical events for women. And I also think that 9-11 is probably the one that really sticks in my brain. Mm -hmm. it, there's, there's been, when you live this long, there's been a lot of historical <laughs> events. <laughs> Not all good. So what is the biggest change you have observed in how people live their everyday lives? I would say telephones are the biggest uh, I remember as a child, they were stuck on the wall and you could not, you know, some people actually had party lines where more than one person could pick up the phone and, and listen in on your conversation. Um, but there was one phone in the house. You didn't have extensions. You didn't have a phone that you could carry in your pocket. Mm -hmm. It was just weird. Um, and so that when my dad, if he would, if he wasn't home and we wanted to find him, we would call three different locations in town if he wasn't at any of those three places. That you couldn't find him. You couldn't mm -hmm. get in touch with him. So I would say being able to find people mm -hmm. quickly and talk to them quickly is, is weird. You know, when you think about how that all evolved. And computers, I mean, heck, when I was started here at the station, I played actual records. Yeah. Actual records. Yes. Wow. Yes. So we, I just look at the change in how radio is and how computers have taken it over. I mean, that's, I would say computers are the biggest change, but what's a phone? A cell phone. It's a technology, is basically. It's a mini computer. It's a little computer. So, yeah, I would say that's the biggest change in our everyday lives is the fact that we're so connected. What period of your life has been the best so far and why? Right now, I would say, yeah. I didn't like. My growing up years, I didn't like oh. high school. I didn't like... Why is that? Uh, because it, I just, I wasn't, I, I don't want to say I wasn't popular, but I wasn't the one of the cool kids, so it was oh, a okay. hard time. And, you know, of course, there's the really frizzy hair when everybody else had straight hair. And there's, hmm. a, you know, it just, it was, I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. So I didn't like high school. I, I as a young adult, I... It was fine, but there were so many things that were worrisome. You know, I worried about everything. And mm -hmm. of course, making your own way, learning your own living, and then starting a family. And then I was a single parent from the time my boys were five and seven. So just a lot of worry all the time. Worry, worry, worry. Money worries and, mm -hmm. and world worries. And I'd say now that I live all by myself and I don't have anybody to worry about, not even a pet, this is what I call wonderful. I don't yeah. have to take care of anybody but me. Okay. 
So I like it. What's the one thing you have always wanted to do but have not done yet? Mm, I have never used my passport. So I, I have never gone. You should go to Russia. I should go to Russia, <laughs> but I would need a tour guide, so you'd have to go with I'll me. I'll come with you. I'm kind of afraid to go there, uh, quite yeah. frankly. But I've always wanted to go to France or England, and my son has lived over there. One of my sons has, you know, for months at a time. And so I've really, I always thought I'd go visit, but, mm-hmm. and the last time you went, I was going to go visit. Mm-hmm. I had my passport ready, and then the pandemic hit yeah. and it kind of goofed everything up. So I haven't gotten to use that. Anything else besides traveling out of country? Um, Because you got to realize I've never lived more than 50 miles from the place I grew up. So just traveling is, you know, I've not even seen a lot of the United States. I really haven't. I don't get out much. So I would say traveling would be important. Although I like being a homebody. I don't mind not going anywhere, but I feel like I'm missing something maybe that I need to go. And and I have a really good friend right now that she just took off for a couple of weeks and went to France by herself. And she's been posting all these pictures and videos. She's walking all over the place. Mm. Like I should have gone with her. I should have yes. gone with her. But you guys would miss me if I left that That's long. true. That's true. I think this whole place would blow up if it I wasn't here. It would blow up without mm. you, Virginia. What advice would you give young people to help them prepare for older age? I would say take care of your body and your mind. I think that's the most important thing because if you don't have your health, it doesn't matter how much money you've got. It doesn't matter, you know, what, how great your job is. But if, if you don't, if your body is not, if your body's falling apart, and let me tell you, when you get to be in your 60s, you feel it. You know, I've always tried to be really healthy. I've always worked out. I've always eaten healthy. I do everything I can to feel good. Mm-hmm. Once you've got that, the rest doesn't matter. I mean, you should always have a job you like. And you should always look at your job as something that you're using valuable skills for and you're helping others. That may not seem like you are, but you are. Everything you do is beneficial to someone else. So if you're thankful for those skills and how you can help others, you know, then you're always going to like your job. But and don't waste money. Don't throw your money away. Don't go into debt. Because if you're not in debt, you're always free. Debt will put you in a prison of your own making. So always be smart with your money and don't go into debt. Pay your bills, live below your means, and take care of your health. And you will be a happy old person like me. (laughs) <laughs> you are my role model, Virginia. I love you. Have you experienced any negative attitudes or discrimination because of your age? Um, I don't think so, because I don't think I act my age. Okay. Have you heard anything from your friends, maybe? Um, well, sometimes you don't get the same respect because they don't think you're quite smart enough or on top of things. Or maybe you, they think you're slipping. But again, if you're taking care of your health, your mind follows and you're just as sharp as you ever were. So I don't feel really discriminated against. I, I think probably I was more discriminated against because of the fact that I'm a woman rather than my age. So the main topic of this podcast is the American dream. But before we dive into that, I want to get to know your original family's history okay. or your roots. Okay. So what generation of immigrants are you and where is your original family from? I would say that my great grandparents were the immigrants. Okay. And where were they from? Uh, my grandfather's people <laughs> <laughs> were, came from Germany, I believe. Last name was Wilcox, and and my grandmother's maiden name was Odding, which was an O E T T. So it's their German descent, and um, it was their parents that came over. So, but since my mother was so old uh, when she had me, she was in her forties. It's more like what what I say would be my great grandparents would be most people's great great grandparents. Okay, but I but you know. I have an odd family. How did you learn about that? Who told you about this family tree? Just my mom talking about her grandfather. I I guess the fact that the homemade bread recipe that she always Mm. made. Well, her grandmother brought the recipe from Germany and and that's where it came from. And 
So that's what we, we make bread. <laughs> We're bread makers. But I don't really have a lot of information on that other than that's where the coloring and the curly hair comes from is the German descent. Uh, but on my father's side, uh, American Indian. Yeah. Mm. I think my great great grandmother was supposed to supposedly a full blooded Oh wow. Uh, Indian. So I've heard in America if you are twenty uh, percent Indian you get a land. Or is that wrong? Know. I don't know. I Somebody w- told me that on DNA test you have to be twenty percent. I, I should go get, find out. You should take that test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you know the reason why your original family immigrated here? No, I really don't. Probably just like everybody else, just wanting a better life. You've mentioned that they bake bread? Yeah, well, they were farmers. And so they lived off the land and did everything themselves. And and this bread recipe was really, it's really good. (laughs) If I weren't off gluten, I would would make Uh, bread. But yeah. So what do you think was their American dream at that time? Just better life? Thinking that they just probably wanted to farm the land and have... Have a good life in the new world. So what do baby boomers think of the American dream? What does your generation feel about this concept in general? The American dream. Well, at our age, we've either got, achieved it or given up on it. I think the American dream was always uh, to own a home, uh, retire early, have, have a family. And you've either done that by this age or it ain't happening. <laughs> I would say that I've 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 done it. Yeah. I've, I was about to ask you what do you think about the American dream? Well, I think it's pretty nice. I think we have a wonderful opportunity in this country to to make our dreams come true. Mm-hmm. Depending on how hard we want to work. You know, I I wasn't raised with money. I wasn't raised with opportunities. I was very small town, but I had a I had a lot I had a lot of intelligence and because my parents were like depression era people I was raised with a healthy respect for a dollar. Mm-hmm. And I have worked hard all my life and I've never made a lot of money, but at the end of my life I have a lot of things to show for it. You know, I have a beautiful home, I have a beautiful family, and I don't owe anybody anything. And that's the reason I'm free. I don't owe anybody anything. And so I think I think it doesn't matter how much money you make. I think it's how it's how much money you keep. Mm-hmm. That's what somebody said. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It's how much money you keep. So I think if you're good with your money, you can have the American dream, even if you never make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So what was your American dream? Have a family. I was raised, I, well, maybe a seven you're supposed to have a family. <laughs> I'm supposed to have children. So that was, you know, that was that was bred into me. So, um, yeah, I, that was my dream. I never had a dream or an ambition about a career, but I've had a very nice career, a mm. couple of different ones, you know, in my lifetime. And I don't know. I've got I've got a pretty good education. Mm-hmm. But again, Family didn't pay for that either. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that I got with scholarships and and working hard. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't know. What's my American dream? Have I done it? You think I've done it? I guess my American dream was to have a family. Mm -hmm. So have you ever thought, this is a little off topic, but have you ever thought about moving out of the United States and maybe reaching for your dream somewhere outside of the States? I'd have to start over. Um, I've thought about leaving the United States sometimes <laughs> when things get ugly, <gasps> but I can't imagine where I'd go. I really don't know where I'd go um, other than just to travel, travel, travel. Maybe mm-hmm. I'd just live on a cruise ship and it could live, live someplace different all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see the world on a cruise yeah. ship. <laughs> Okay, so lastly, I want to hear what you think of the younger generation in the United States. And by younger generation, I mean specifically Gen Z. I am Gen Z. Okay, so anywhere from... 97 to 2012 is Gen Z. Okay, so in their 20s. Yes. So what do you think about this younger generation? I think that they have an opportunity. They're very smart. And I think their opportunities are is to pay attention because right now they're living in a world that's full of turmoil and chaos. I mean, the entire world is mm-hmm. not just 
America. And the fact that they have access to all that information all the time, and they're intelligent, I think that they have the op- opportunity to change things for the better because they're growing up in, well, let's face it, crappy circumstances. Mm-hmm. But there's a potential. They had the ability to take the rights that were given here in, Amer- in America and use them for the better, for the greater good. And I think they're smart enough to do that. I really, really do. I don't think they're selfish. I don't think they're stupid. I don't think they're lazy. But I think that they're having to pay attention to the world and all of its problems. And they'll figure out how to make it better. So is that something that you admire in younger people today? Oh, yeah. Anything else besides that? The honesty. Because, uh, you know, I hate it when people blow sunshine up my skirt. I want to know the truth. Mm-hmm. And I feel like young people are pretty darn truthful. Maybe it's because of social media. They just put it out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I and like social that. Social media is pretty hateful. You have to have a, well, it can be hateful, yeah. but it can be very truthful, too. Yes. You really know what people are thinking. Truthful because and not so much. Honestly. There's no there's no uh, politically correct filter on social media. It's hard to say those things to a person's face. <laughs> you know, that's true. It's easier to just type it. Yeah. It's hard to put, say it on a, in, in a phone conversation. That's mm-hmm. why your generation doesn't talk on the phone. <laughs> you know, but I've gotten to the point where I don't want to talk on the phone mm-hmm. either. Mm-hmm. I really like the texting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have a young heart. I feel like you were born in the wrong generation now that I'm talking to you and getting to know you more. Oh, well, like I said, I don't feel like I'm really as old as I am. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. So what mistakes d- did your generation make and what can Gen Z learn from them? Maybe not being as involved in the world as we should until it's too late. You know what I mean? Not taking part. I feel like my generation has not been very s- civic minded mm-hmm. as much as they should. Now, the people that were older in the 60s and 70s, they You know, we were kids. We were teenies in the 60s and 70s. So I feel like we had it really easy in the 80s and 90s. I mean, we had it pretty easy. So we didn't have to, we didn't have to work as hard. And I feel like if we tried a little harder, maybe we wouldn't be in the mess. I really look at the world and I think, uh, eh, it's, it's a mess. Mm-hmm. It's a mess. And, but I'm, I'm not giving up hope on it. Mm-hmm. So I think we could have been more involved from the get go. But, you know, when things are real easy and you don't have to work that hard, you know, as far as making the world a great place, because it already feels like it is. I just feel like that's the what we grew up in. I feel like that's kind of reflecting on Gen Z as well. Not working very hard or maybe millennials. I don't know. I don't know. Younger generation is uh, right now. Anyway, everybody is trying to become, uh, you know, social media influencer or getting easy money through. Right. I mean, there is no easy money. Of course, you still have to put effort into making content and et cetera, et cetera. But it's still everybody is striving for more of an online money making way. Well, they're trying to get trying to be smart about it. Well, my boys are my sons are millennials and. Like I used to tell them when I was your age, you know, when I was a senior in high school, I had three jobs. I worked 52 hours a week and I went to school and I graduated third in my class. And they look at me and they go, Mom, we obviously don't have the same work ethic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, but they don't have to because if they work smarter, they don't have to work that hard. So there's nothing wrong with working smarter. So it's not generation. You can't use that as an excuse. No, if I'd had, if I'd been had... The opportunity to sit at a computer <laughs> back in my <laughs> teens, because once I figured that out in my 20s, when computers were really taken off and spreadsheets, and I figured out a lot of stuff where I didn't have to physically work that hard. I mean, you're talking just about using your head or using your brawn, your brain or your brawn. And, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with using your brain. So finally, Virginia, I want to ask you this question. What's the most important thing in life? The most important thing in life would be relationships, whether they're family relationships, friend relationships, love relationships. Relationship is the reason we're here, the reason we're on earth. 
if you want to sit in a little room by yourself all the time, that's really, there's really not much reason to be here. Because what we give to each other of ourselves is the most important thing we can do. If we put ourselves in other people's shoes, if we think of others, I don't say don't think of yourself, but I mean, if we think of others and how what we do impacts others and how we take care of ourselves and our families and our world, our environment, that's the most important thing. Thank you so much for visiting me today, Virginia. We are upon a quick break. We'll be back right after this with a Gen Zer, Jaden Tico. studio with Jaden Tico. You are a famous social media influencer with an audience over 6 million on YouTube, almost 3 million on TikTok and over 200,000 on Instagram. I would say you are the definition of a classical Gen Zer. Social media is your work. You are highly collaborative, self-reliant, and a role model for a lot of other Gen Zers. You have lots of interests besides social media, and you are a very well-rounded person, which is why I chose you to interview for my uh, episode for this podcast. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So let's, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so let's begin by just getting to know you a little bit better. All right. Hello. My name is Jaden, otherwise known as Tico Online. Tico is more of like my character. I sort of portray a character online with a different voice. I'm known as like the whole fish body and everything. Mm -hmm. People watch my videos and they think I'm a little kid, but really that's just what Tico is. Me, Jaden, I just sort of voice the character Tico and all my videos are usually Fortnite. Um, but recently I've been branching out into some different content as well. Okay, so the reason why I have you on the show is because you are Gen Zer. You were born in... 2005. Yes, so that's technically still a Gen Z, and that's going to be the topic we will discuss with you today. Uh, so describe Gen Z. How does that generation stamp reflect on you? And just so you guys know, there are like five top stereotypes about Gen Zers. It's that Gen Zers have a short attention span, Gen Zers are multitaskers, and Gen Zers are addicted to technology and can't even handle face-to-face -face interactions. And that we also ghost a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I can just go ahead and say all of those things. Unfortunately, I do see in a lot of Gen Zers. I do see a lot of those things in Gen Zers. Not the not the stuff you want to be seeing, but um, sometimes I even see it in myself. Uh, I definitely I've done at least all of those things at some point in my life, at least once, um, some of them multiple times. And I mean, I, I like to say, you know, a lot of people, you know, if you're being honest with yourself, you can probably say that you've done those things as well at some point. Um, and then the technology, being addicted to technology and everything, I, I will definitely agree with that. I do think a lot of people um, in Gen Z are addicted to their phones and everything. For me, I like, to, I like to think mine's a little bit different. I kind of have an excuse. It's sort of like my job. So I feel like when I'm on my phone a lot, I sort of have an excuse mm -hmm. um, but I know like a lot of my friends they're just they don't really have an excuse to be on their phones all the time and they are um, and I even have friends that don't do social media or anything mm -hmm. um, and they have more screen time than me mm -hmm. and I just think that's crazy like that they're on their phones more than me and I do it for a living. I definitely see the whole stereotype with them being so addicted to their phones and all that. Would you say that that's what Gen Z is struggling with the most? If not, um, what is it? I think technology for sure plays a part uh, in what Gen Zers are struggling with the most. Um, it could be online bullying as well. Um, I just I feel like a lot of the struggles we have today as Gen Zers probably tie back to technology in some way, especially, like I said, with online bullying. I know that's one of the number one issues today. I know, unfortunately, um, a lot of online bullying has even led to suicide. And, you know, online bullying is a really big issue. So how does Gen Z view the technological impact on society? I think technology affects our lives uh, in a, a lot of different ways. Um, it also just sort of depends on how much you let it. For me, I wake up to an alarm on my Alexa. So I wake up to technology and then usually what I do is I get out of bed, 
I go, I wash my face, brush my teeth, then I'll, I'll get on my phone, then I will go downstairs and I will use my coffee maker, which is technology as well, and I will make coffee, and then, you know, like I said, I'm on my phone, which is also technology. I might watch TV while I'm eating breakfast or something, and then I'll usually go and work, which is, again, on technology. So technology, for me, has pretty much taken over my life, but it's not really a negative thing. I think technology has made my life better in a lot of ways. It definitely makes things a lot easier as well, and it just depends on how you let technology affect your life, I'd say. Speaking of life and living better lives, uh, what do you love about living right now? I love the technology. I, I mean, I know, I know it sounds cliche and also sounds very Gen Zer. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, very Gen Zer. A lot of people probably hear that and just think, oh technology but i really do think it's a great thing if you just immediately hear technology and just want to shoot it down i'd say give it a chance um if you just immediately shoot it down i i'd like to think that you probably haven't really explored all the great things technology can do for you because if you if you can't at least agree that technology can do some good things for you i don't think um you know you've probably really explored every option So you are a popular social media influencer. You have lots of opportunities in your life. And I would assume that person that has all of that power, you can just get whatever you want at this point. But what's the one thing you have always wanted to do but have not done yet? Is there a thing like that? Like eat a snake, swim with sharks, jump out of plane. <laughs> you're asking me, okay, I just, I think it's funny because you're asking me, what's the one thing that you've always wanted to do that you haven't done? And then you start listing all these horrible things that <laughs> nobody would want to do. That I would nobody, do it. You would, you would I eat would a snake. I would jump out of plane. Okay, okay, well, I mean, I guess that's not completely horrible, but eat a snake. <laughs> Who would want to eat a snake? Like, why, is, like that, is that on your bucket list? You want to eat a snake? I mean, if I get paid to do it, maybe. I was just going to say I wanted to, you know, go on a Netflix show or something, but I mean, I guess eat a snake. So how are you planning to prepare for older age? What's your future plans? How will your life look in 30 years? I don't, I don't really have any. I mean, I'm just kind of just kind of winging it right now. Like, I'm just enjoying life. Um, I got my job. Um, also, the, the unfortunate thing about uh, being an influencer, I guess you could say, is you don't really know um, where you're going to be compared to, you know, if you're a doctor, you could say, oh, well, maybe I want to be researching this field or I want to keep working on patients and something like that, where uh, being an influencer, we don't know what our tomorrow is going to look like. We don't mm -hmm. know what we're going to be doing. Doing, um, especially our pays like my, my my pay is different every single month every single day I make a different amount of money I've never made the same amount of money um, each day mm -hmm. I don't know how much I'll make tomorrow how much I'll make the day after sure I can make estimates but you know There's no way to know for sure where a doctor could say, oh, well, this is my salary. So they know like, okay, I'm going to get this amount of mm -hmm. money where I, for example, like I could just have zero views for the rest of the year and make no money. Like all of it could completely just go away. So I don't really know where I'll be in 30 years. I haven't really made plans. I'm just kind of like right now I'm focusing on living in the moment. I just want to make the most out of right now and then just kind of see where it takes me and that's that's kind of how i've gotten to this moment i've just kind of let life take me in its own direction mm -hmm. so what period of your life has been the best so far and why i know you're young but maybe there was the best part of your life that you remember like it was yesterday maybe it was yesterday <laughs> it was yesterday actually i'd say now is probably the best best time of my life um especially like as i'm getting older i definitely think um Yeah, this, this is the prime of my life right now. So let's get into the actual topic of this podcast now. And it's, you know, immigration, the American dream, all of that stuff. Do you know which generation of immigrants are you? Uh, no, unfortunately, I do not. But I, I, I'd say I feel like there's probably a lot of Gen Zers that probably don't know. Okay. I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay. <laughs> I, I had no idea that was even a question that you could ask me. <laughs> I, I had no idea. Seriously, no idea. Do you know where your original family came from? Do you know your roots? I think, I think Ireland, I want to say. I feel like I've heard that from my family before, that I'm somewhat Irish, um, but I'm not completely sure uh, if that's where we came from. But I do know I am part Irish. Mm -hmm. And is that from your dad? 
I'd say that's probably from my dad's side. That that's my best guess. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Like I said, I've I've never really been super um into like my family roots and all of that. Mm-hmm. So you are very American. <laughs> okay, <You are. laughs> all right. Well, yeah, I guess you could say that. Yep, that's probably the best way to put it. <laughs> I, I honestly, I wish I knew. I am curious. I am curious, but I, I have no idea. Okay, then let's uh, swing straight to the topic of the American dream. What do you think about the American dream? I'm very interested because you are Gen Zer. I am mm-hmm. too. I have my own thoughts on this concept. And I wonder if it's going to be somewhat similar or v- way different because I am an immigrant. Mm-hmm. There is this cultural difference too. I feel like the generic idea of the American dream is Be successful with your work career, get a house, have a family, have kids and be happy, Um, you know, make money. I feel like that's probably the most basic idea of the American dream. I think I think overall the end goal, if you have achieved all those things, yeah, you could say you've achieved the American dream. But I I wouldn't say that means you're going to be happy. You know, there's a lot of people that have all of those things, but that doesn't mean they're happy. So what is your American dream? I know you're American. It's probably <laughs> does not apply on Americans. You are just I living guess, your dream. Then. Yeah, my dream, dream would also be an American dream since I am American. <laughs> yes. But I my, my, my dream or my version of the American dream is that. But the main importance is in the happiness uh, I, I'd say you don't have your American dream unless you're happy. And, you know, if you're really happy with where you are in life, you could have already achieved your American dream. You don't have to have money. You don't have to have a house or a family. But if you're happy with life, I'd say you've achieved that American dream. So that's pretty much how I feel about the American dream for me. I would say if you want to come to America for the American dream, I do it. You know, you got nothing to lose. And America, from the history books even, has been known. We're, we're our freedom and everything. I think the American dream's real. I think if you come here, you definitely have a lot of potential to have success. You can definitely be successful in America. Um, I, I'm not sure if I could say that it's, you know, any easier or harder than if you were somewhere else. But I can tell you it is definitely possible here. I would like to believe I've done it myself and anyone else can. I did it. I was I was four. 14 when I would say I, I accomplished my American dream. Mm-hmm. I've been happy with my life. I've just been enjoying it. So. so how do you feel about immigrants coming to America for the American dream, but Americans leaving the country for theirs? So me personally, I have even considered leaving the country. Um, I, I'm not sure if I'd say that was for my American dream, just kind of more, uh, I thought it'd be cool to, uh, live somewhere else and continue my passion, which was my American dream. And it, it helped me achieve my American dream. And I would continue that passion somewhere else as well. I mean, I, I would even consider moving to maybe like London or somewhere else in the world, you know, anywhere for me, like my job, if I can do my job, I'll be happy. And I think my American dream is just kind of my dream, my Mm -hmm. generic dream. Like if I can achieve my idea of an American dream, then I'll be happy no matter where I am. I don't even have to be in America to achieve my American dream. Mm -hmm. You know, if anything, you could even say, you know, anyone could achieve their American dream. You don't even have to live in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you tolerate that. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's nothing wrong with if you if you go somewhere else to uh, look for your American dream. And honestly, if you're able to go somewhere else in the world um, to search for your passion, then you must be doing something right. Because there's there's a lot of people that, you know, they, they wouldn't be able to just leave the country and go off and search for whatever it is they want to do. Uh, what do you think about the older generation in the United States? Now, before you came to the studio, I interviewed a baby boomer and oh. she gave me an answer to what she thinks about Gen Zers. Mm-hmm. So I'm very interested to hear what you think about baby boomers and just older generation in the United States. Well, I think they're they're very nice. I will say, I think older people, no offense, are very sweet. Um, You guys are very, very kind, very loving. I don't think I've ever met a a baby boomer um, that I've had a good interaction with that I I was like, okay, they're mean, they're nice. Um, But, you know, know, occasionally, 
uh, you know, if you know a kid's like riding their dirt bike or something down your neighborhood, you guys might like yell at them. So I feel like you guys get a bad stereotype that you're like evil or like mean or like the grumpy old lady or man or whatever. But I know you guys are nice. You know, at my church especially, I've met a lot of you, and I think you guys are very sweet people, and I'm I'm happy to be around you. But I, I know a lot of people probably give you the bad stereotype of just being the old grumpy lady or the old grumpy man. What would you like to say to a baby boomer right now? Can you feel the wrinkles on your face? <laughs> I've always been curious. Like, can you feel them? Like, do you feel every little wrinkle in your face? Or is it just like, you don't know they're there? Like, I mean, do you I know your face is sagging? I mean, can, no offense. But, yeah. Right. You can probably find that out yourself when you're smiling. You have that little wrinkle area. But I can't of. feel that. Like, I can't, like, I can feel the my muscle stretching, but I can't mm-hmm. feel my skin like dropping into my face you know what i mean oh that's what i'm saying like i can't feel my skin off yeah like the wrinkles like what like if you look at um a baby boomer they're definitely gonna have some type of wrinkles on their face um can they feel like their skin like the texture difference and like the Mm. actual wrinkles and everything Mm, that's a good question i've never thought about it well i didn't think about it till 10 seconds ago but (laughs) you know here we are (laughs) All right, so lastly, what's the most important thing in life, Jaden? Happiness. I know it sounds cliche, but seriously, you could have anything else in the world, but if you're not happy, you're probably not going to enjoy it. And I say probably because, you know what, there probably are some people that would enjoy life even if they weren't happy, which would probably make them happy. So, you know what, I I take it back. You have to be happy. You have to be happy. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) That's my motivational right there. That's that's all you got to know. You got to be happy. Well, thank you so much, Jaden, for visiting me today. Make sure to give us a follow on our Instagram and Facebook at Podcast TID.